פגשנו אותו בשגרירות האמריקאית החדשה ובמשרדו הדי קטן, יש לומר, לעומת משרדו בשגרירות בתל אביב, ודיברנו אותו באמת על אותה תוכנית שלום אמריקאית, ופרידמן אומר לנו, התוכנית, עובדים על התוכנית, היא קרובה להשלמה, אבל היא תוצג רק בעוד כמה חודשים. בואו נראה את הרעיון. Ambassador David Friedman, thank you for having us here in your new office at the new uh, U.S. Embassy in Jerusalem. Uh, you know, when people get married, people ask them the day after, how does it feel? Does it feel any different? So does it feel any different? Uh, it feels great, and uh, I'm happy to welcome you as one of the first reporters, I think the first reporter from Israel to visit, and uh, you should uh, visit uh, many more times. You were, I think, one of the leading Trump administration officials uh, who pushed for moving the U.S. Embassy. What happened in November, December last year that he decided to change course? Um, I don't think anybody pushed the president. I think this was the president's uh, decision. And, uh, you know, we we're coming again to that six-month cycle. And uh, you know, I think the president is fundamentally uncomfortable not keeping promises. Did this also have to do with political pressures? Uh, Not that I'm aware of. I was with him in November uh, in the White House, in the Oval Office. Uh, I'm not aware of any discussions uh, where political considerations came into it at all. In fact, I remember specifically he said, let's do the right thing, uh, whatever it is. Uh, and uh, I, I don't think he cared less one way or the other about the politics. Do you think that um, part of this peace plan, when it is presented, will eventually Uh, do lead to uh, two capitals in Jerusalem. You know, Barak, I'm, I'm very reluctant to get into specific terms that, of what we're talking about. I think uh, on specific terms, people are going to have to wait. Another campaign promise was to get the ultimate deal between Israel and the Palestinians. Um, don't you think that at the end of the day, when you look at what happened the last few months, by fulfilling one campaign promise, he made the other campaign promise maybe impossible to fulfill? Give him time. He's, he hasn't failed on the ultimate deal. He's working on the ultimate deal. It's certainly too soon to, uh, to write the uh, postmortem on that. The peace plan is practically already drafted. Do you see it being launched in the near future? I think within months. I don't, can't give you a specific date. Uh, and it's not finalized. I mean, there's an awful lot of listening going on. Uh, mostly in Washington, but here as well. Um, we're continuing to think about it. Uh, and it's not just the substance, but also the timing and the presentation. Uh, and so all those things are being factored into the calculus, but I would measure it in months. On both sides, there's very little belief that such a thing is possible. So why does the president believe that such a deal can be found? He's always been an optimist. Uh, he has better powers of negotiation and persuasion than anybody else I've ever met. Um, and I think primarily he's looking for that win-win structure where everybody looks at it and says, we're better off than before. Even if the parties say no, he's not going to force them to take it? No. Uh, let's move on to uh, the Iranian issue and another dramatic uh, decision by the president to withdraw from the Um, Iran uh, nuclear deal. The question that is being raised is whether the U.S. strategy is to change Iranian behavior or to change the Iranian regime. The U.S. Uh, sides with the Iranian people. Our fight is not with the Iranian people but with the regime. But I think uh, the goal of the U.S. is to uh, end all of the rogue behavior, not just the nuclear regime but the ballistic missiles. the encroachment through Yemen and Iraq and Syria, uh, the, the threats, the financing of terrorism. That's the goal of the United States. So let's talk about this rogue behavior. The president said a few weeks ago that he wants U.S. forces out of Syria. Um, the Israeli government was very concerned by this statement. How can you stop um, the Iranians from establishing themselves militarily in Syria while getting U.S. forces out of Syria? You know, I've uh, spent a fair amount of time with the Israeli government trying to understand whether they have any issues with the U.S. policies. They haven't. Um, and the Israelis have been doing a pretty significant job of starting to contain Iranian behavior in Syria. Um, 
So I'm not aware that that is a, is a problem. I haven't witnessed it on the Israeli side, and I spend a lot of time with them. But you know, when you look at who Netanyahu goes to when he wants to discuss Syria, uh, he's not going to the White House, he's going to the Kremlin. I think he's speaking to both, both leaders. Uh, I, I guarantee you he speaks more with the President of the United States than he does with the, um, with the leadership of Russia. Yesterday, you went to Bnei Brak, right, uh, to meet a, um, the community there, and they just shoved into your hand uh, this picture of uh, the Temple Mount with the Jewish Temple instead of the Dome of the Rock. I think it took a second. Uh, picture gets taken, and then this is on the Internet. And I was mortified, absolutely mortified. I thought it was disrespectful, uh, incredibly stupid thing to do. And, uh, and I spent the better part of the last 24 hours uh, trying to make it clear that this doesn't reflect my views and that the United States' uh, respect for the status quo on the Haram al-Sharif, the Temple Mount, uh, is, uh, is, is still there. It's 100 uh, percent. It's intact. Um, well, listen, people do stupid things. I'll have to be more careful the next time when somebody rushes at me with a picture. But I, I have no idea what was in that person's head. Ambassador David Friedman, thank you for this interview. My pleasure. Thank you.